Good morning. Today we're talking about uh, validity, more specifically internal validity, um, looking at what makes a study internally valid. Uh, we're going to talk about a few of the reasons uh, why we need to have internal validity in our research uh, so it can be taken serious uh, in all reality. So um, to start off, validity is basically the reference to, uh, to the approximate truth of an inference that we're making. And more specifically, internal validity is the extent to which you're able to say that no other variables are the ones that are influencing the, the effect. Uh, so if I'm saying that variable X is the cause for uh, variable Y, I need to make sure that internally valid that X is in fact uh, the causing factor and there's not other influences that are affecting it. Uh, if there are, then my study is not internally valid, and that's, that's an issue if you're looking at from a, from a research perspective. And so when we're looking at internal validity, we need to make sure that when we're saying something is causing something, that that is in fact what is causing uh, our problem or our phenomena. So uh, looking at it, uh, something else we need to consider is that validity and invalidity should kind of be understood to have the words approximately or tentatively put in front of them. Um, this is just for a more of a precautionary uh, method of it. And the, the other side of it as well is that um, when we say something is valid, uh, and if something is internally valid, usually there is evidence to support our inference as being correct. So that needs to be remembered as well. So um, again, going back to internal validity, uh, its internal validity is looked at as uh, against what is X causing Y, uh, or if X is in fact causing Y. Um, Campbell, when he originally was looking at internal validity, uh, basically um, defined internal validity as the question, did in fact the experimental stimulus make some significant difference in this specific instance? Um, now, there he actually had a different name for uh, internal validity, which is very interesting. He actually proposed relabeling it um, local molar causal validity. Local referring to that they're limited to the context of their particular treatments, outcomes, people, and settings that are being studied. Uh, causal, uh, not about the other types of inference uh, that scientists can make. And the molar, that they are a complex package of many different components. Uh, that, that name, that tag did not stick with it. And we have since been looking at it as internal validity. Um, now there are some threats to internal validity that could uh, make your study invalid. If you're doing conducting research and you have these types of threats, you need to consider them. And we'll talk a little further about consideration for internal validity. Um, one of the, I'm not going to go too much in depth. I'm not on all of them because we don't. You know, we've, this class is only limited to a certain number of time or a certain amount of time. But there's a few that I want to kind of discuss for this lecture. Um, one of the first ones is the ambiguous temporal precedence. Uh, that's one of the threats, and, and that's more looking at the, there's a lack of clarity um, as to which variable is causing which. Uh, for example, like is A causing B, or is B causing A. It's almost like a reciprocating uh, circle there. Um, so a good example of this would, uh, would be looking at like is incarceration causing prisoners or, is, or are prisoners causing more incarceration rates and it, it goes back and forth. So it, like if we have more prisoners we're going to have more incarceration uh, which would then increase behavioral statistics for more prisoners coming out. They're going to be repeating this behavior. And so you have to look at it as X causing Y or is Y causing X, the two variables being incarceration rates and prisoner behavior. So you need to be looking at it, making sure that you're, you're looking at the correct cause and you're not looking at just the effect. Um, another one looking at is, is a selection threat. You need to consider that, um, that there are systematic differences over conditions um, that could cause the observed effect. Uh, for example, like the, it could the person being experimented upon could be different than just your average person. That goes to randomness, which we'll discuss in a few minutes. Um, for example, if you're doing a test on education and you're trying to get a pure or an internally valid study and you're unaware that the this, this students that you're surveying, uh, their parents are reading to them on a daily basis or they have a higher edu education or high IQ, that could make your study internally invalid because you're not considering that. 
Um, so that's something to consider as well. Um, another one is you need to look at is, is a testing threat. Um, and this is kind of looking at the exposure, if a, a respondent's exposure to a test could affect their scores on subsequent exposure to that test. Um, and, and this can oftentimes be confused with a treatment effect. But this is kind of saying that if I take a test multiple times, I'm going to be have, have familiarities created in my mind if I'm the respondent. And I'm actually going to be able to see uh, it's more more memory, more uh, familiarity with the test, like questions are not just sprung at me randomly, um, and that could skew my results and my, what, I'm, what I am uh, responding back to. So that needs to be considered. Uh, another one that I, that's, I think really should be looked at is the additive and the interactive effects of, uh, of, of internal validity. Uh, and this is looking at maybe that um, something uh, that a threat can be added to that of another threat that may depend upon the level of, a, of a, something else. Uh, for example, uh, we could not be considering, if we're looking at uh, the handing out of scholarships over, over a certain time of year, uh, we're, we're not looking at maybe that higher achieving students or recipients of merit-based scholarships, and that could can be confusing our data and our, and our results. So um, all of these threats, uh, the reason why we list these is because um, they need to be considered if you want to have your study be internally valid. Um, and, and it's something also to be considered is that uh, we, you almost want to look at the threats on a one-by-one one or a case-by-case -case basis. Um, that you, you need to look at these and make sure that you're not becoming internally invalid. Uh, also, it needs also to be remembered that threats are context-based and they're not all blanketing and they're not generalized for every single situation. Uh, threats in one circumstance are not necessarily going to be automatically threats in another circumstance. Campbell talked about this and he showed that, he said maybe like if you're watching Sesame Street, that may be a factor in your educational efficiency. However, watching Sesame Street is probably not going to be a factor in, in reducing unwanted pregnancies. So you need to be looking at your threats on an individual case-by-case -case basis uh, to be giving you your internal validity. Um, and there also needs to be, in your internal validity, I kind of prefaced this previously, that there needs to be random assignment, uh, which eliminates the selection bias. Now, there's a difference between random assignment uh, and, and just randomiz randomization, um, which we've, we've discussed in previous lectures. Uh, random assignment is that I'm not assigning it to a specific course. So if I have multiple courses or if I have multiple groups, I'm making sure that I'm randomly assigning, uh, assigning the respondents uh, to certain tests and not grouping them all in one area. So that needs to be considered. That's also somewhat of a threat. Um, now there is a relationship between internal validity uh, as well as and, and statistical conclusion validity. Um, one of the is that they're both concerned with the study operations rather than the constructs of the study itself. Um, now statistical conclusions validity is more concerned with the errors uh, and statistical covariation whereas internal validity is more concerned with the causal causal reasoning like cause and effect reality errors um, statistics could be accurate um, but the cause may make the study invalid so there is somewhat of a relation between those two validity factors um, overall you just need to make sure that your study is valid and there's multiple like we've talked about internal validity but there are other types of validity there's external validity there's again as previously mentioned statistical conclusion validity uh, but you need to remember that if your study your study cannot be reliable and cannot be taken serious if it is not valid uh, and conversely on the opposite side a study is not valid if it's not reliable so you need to be looking at that when you're doing your research um, it, it's good when you, one of the things that a lot often, oftentimes researchers do is they will conduct pilot studies to make sure that the threats are not in implementing their study and they're not skewing their results and and that their validity is being it's being balanced and it is being validated um, and that's something you may want to do when your research is doing a pilot study to make sure that there are no threats and that you are being internally valid in your research. Um, that concludes today's lecture. I hope uh, this has been effective for you and kind of helped you understand what internal validity is. Thanks.